Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and a big congratulations are in order for the Indian Space Research Organization, who, of course, successfully landed their spacecraft Chandrayaan-3 on the moon earlier this week. Now, it's been taking a while for me to actually get round to this video because A, I've been really busy, and B, I've been waiting for some really cool footage to come out, and we haven't had a huge amount of footage from it, but what we do have is some cool bits that sort of fit the story together. Now, this is a sequence from, I can believe it's camera number four, looking down from the side of the spacecraft towards the lunar surface as the spacecraft comes in and approaches for landing. Now, the quality we have for this is not great. This was posted to Twitter. I haven't been able to find it on their website. And also, they've decided to do this sort of blending frame transformation whereby they show the frame and they blend it together with the neighboring frames, which kind of makes it hard to tell what's going on. But, but I figured that, you know, if you actually go in and pull out the individual frames and remove the blurring, it looks a whole lot better. Unfortunately, this is an incredibly tedious process, so I haven't done that to the whole video. Nevertheless, I hope we actually get the raw frames from this because I'd love to do some motion interpolation and try to track these features back. But look, the really interesting part of this sequence is when it finally gets through the rough braking phase and begins the, the fine braking, the careful maneuvering, the hovering, the translation, as it approaches the, plant, the, the surface of the moon. And the way you know it's in this phase is the spacecraft really changes orientation and then pauses for a moment as it surveys the landing site, makes a translation, and eventually descends onto the surface, making some uh, adjustments here and there. And then right at the end, we get a little flash of those thrusters, kicking up the regolith in a way that uh, only Chinese spacecraft have managed in recent years. And of course, that meant much celebrating, not just around the control room, but around India in general. And of course, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course, waving a flag on the screen because he couldn't be there because he was at the BRICS conference. I noticed they put Prime Minister of India on the screen so that I wouldn't accidentally call him the president like I did during the Chandrayaan 2 event. My favourite celebration video was this one showing Israel Chief getting down on the dance floor. If Bollywood movie productions can have big song and dance numbers, why can't their space programme? Unfortunately, yeah, this video is totally nothing to do with this particular event, but nevertheless, I bet there was some dancing going on. Of course, the spacecraft couldn't stop to celebrate. It had to get right to work. Its time on the surface is limited by the sunlight. When the sun goes down, the spacecraft is probably not going to wake up again. So it, it begins by deploying the ramp for the rover. The rover deployed a solar panel and is lowered down the, the ramp. There's actually wires that are used to slowly lower this down towards the lunar surface. Now, if you look carefully at the wheel nearest the camera, you might catch that there's uh, some features on it designed to leave imprints in the lunar soil. JPL, of course, has been doing this with their Mars rovers. But it looks like the logo here is the ISRO logo. And assuming nothing has changed, the other side will have the Ashoka Lions. This is from a video about the rover on Chandrayaan 2, which left an entirely different kind of imprint on the moon. Now, it looks like the rover spent a day or so at the bottom of the ramp, uh, you know, probably checking systems out, charging its batteries before it finally proceeded out beyond, uh, you know, the immediate vicinity of the lander and turned itself. Why did it turn itself? Well, that vertical thing coming up, those are the solar panels, and you notice that it turned to align its solar panels with the sun. We can get an idea of how long the rover deployment took by looking at the shadows. Here's it at the top of the ramp, here is what it looks like when it had moved further down the ramp, and you see the shadow of the lander is starting to come down. And by the time it's moved a long way out, the sun is much higher up. So presumably with full consideration given to the rover's limited lifespan, it's going to set out at some point and start trying to do science on things. The two instruments that it has is an alpha particle x-ray spectrometer where you hit a rock with uh, your alpha rays and you check the x-rays that come off. And then there's the light-induced breakdown spectroscope which hits the rock with a laser and sees what kind of light comes off. Also, for those wondering, it has a range of about 500 meters, so there's no way that it's going to get over and meet the Chinese U-2 rover. Immediately after landing, there was some question about where the actual touchdown coordinates were, and of course, uh, people on the internet began working to find this out. Based on the video that was released, uh, yeah, Sean managed to collect it or collapse it down to a 10 meter by 10 meter box, which is pretty impressive. 
And interestingly, before there was any confirmation of these coordinates, the ISRO uh, Twitter account shared this image showing that the lander had been observed on the lunar surface using the orbital high resolution camera from Chandrayaan-2. This is the highest quality camera in low lunar orbit. It's superior even on paper to uh, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's camera. So of course we can take this image and uh, we can compare it with the predictions and yeah, they're they're overlapping. It was pretty impressive. The interesting thing about this tweet, though, was that it was deleted minutes after posting, and people wondered why. And it appears that they didn't want to spoil this and fine present that was gifted to uh, Mr. Modi, an image which just happens to include the coordinates of the landing site. So where is this? Well, this is a you know map of the moon in Google Earth. You can see where the like the Apollo 11 site is. The site that Chandrayaan 3 landed at was about within about 20 degrees of the South Pole. They'll talk about it being a polar lander, but you know 20 degrees out is a fair distance from the pole. On the other hand, 20 within 20 degrees of the pole is 3% of the lunar surface, so they are definitely the poliest of the soft landers so far. There have been hard landers that got closer to the South Pole, including the impact probe on Chandrayaan-1. Speaking of impact probes, it's worth uh, taking a look at where Luna 25 ended up on this same map. Now, as of right now, we don't have a definitive impact site. It may have been imaged, but we certainly haven't found it at this point. We do have coordinates from, uh, you know, derived from the final orbit that put it on the edge of this crater as the terrain rises. If we do get anything out of the Luna 25 investigation, I won't be surprised if it's blamed on a software problem because that seems to be the problem that everybody has. A bearer sheet, Chandrayaan 2, Hakuto R. It's very much the way that things go these days. Chandrayaan 3 succeeded partly because they corrected the problems and partly because they tested all of the potential things that could happen. In the end, the landing was actually flawless and all that extra work wasn't necessary, but I think it was necessary so that they could actually exercise their entire code base. Frequently while testing for one thing, you find problems with something completely unrelated. So finally, I want to finish with uh, the, some actual science that we have got out of Chandrayaan-3. They've now published this this morning from the Chased Instrument. This is a device which puts a temperature probe into the soil to a depth of a few inches, you know, 10 centimeters or so. And it's measuring the temperature as it goes down because the lunar surface is a very poor thermal conductor. And while the temperature on the surface may be 100 Celsius. As you go down, you know, 80 millimeters under the surface, the temperature has dropped below zero Celsius. And this kind of information helps scientists model the thermal properties of the crust and also model how well it could retain water that it perhaps captured or is uh, you know, released during the formation of the moon. One of the reasons that we are interested in the polar regions of the moon is because it's believed that there's more chance of there being water there. And water is an immensely useful substance because it contains hydrogen, which can be used for rocket fuels or for other um, you know, processing. Chandrayaan-3 won't be the first spacecraft to find evidence of water on the moon, but it might find more water on the moon than other locations. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.